Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our flight in discovering uh, one more expression today. Uh, yesterday, we talked about the 藐视一切, which is the posture, position, or perspective, or mentality um, of somebody who is thinking too high of themselves. Therefore, they adopt an attitude or all the piece I mentioned before <laughs> to look at everybody else with this belittling angle as if they are higher above every, everybody else. I don't know. I don't know if I ever came across people like that. Um, maybe a little bit. Um, I met a couple of such uh, Okay, so today we continue with 一切. Two characters, 一切众生. 一切众生 is a terminology came from Buddhism. Um, it's not a commoner's phrase. It's a special term. It's almost like a term came from Bible in a Western sense, right? So it's a special expression that's fixed. Nobody's going to change it. So in Buddhism teaching, this is a set phrase. Um, 一切众生, basically, according to the Buddhism definition, include all the beings uh, without legs, with two legs, with four legs, with multiple legs. Okay, we can kind of imagine uh, in nature what kind of creatures are those, right? Uh, just defined by the number of legs. And then with color or without color, with consciousness or without consciousness. And then this famously buddhism expression use of fate you know the, the the character like look like this fate is a negation uh so i mean in in a western logic when we say fate not these so that means excluding this everything else right that that becomes by negating this it's including everything else that's not mentioned, not defined within this small scope. It's everything else, right? It's more inclusive that way. So then it says a fake, non, a uh, fake consciousness being. So it's a uh, everybody who I mean every beings that defined beyond the scope of conscious beings, and then fake again negate without conscious beings. So it's super all-inclusive. <laughs> Everybody, um, every forms, shapes, um, and the mental state, like your brain, like a different, comes with different type of brains, all included in this definition of 一切众生. Okay, review of 一切. Um, it's one cut. So one has nothing fancy to say. Chinese just, Use this visual horizontal line to mean just number one. Um, and of course, as a language, one can be impacted uh, into many, many different meanings and using many, many different expressions in this yi qi. It's like collective, like collectively, everything is considered as one. And actually, in Taoism teaching, everything starts from one, just one thing and then we subcategory right and all that taxonomy of beings um but everything starting from one that's the starting point and but we have this knife thing symbol on the right and number seven on the left that means cut something into an odd <laughs> number of pieces i don't know if you ever tried to cut something into seven pieces but eight pieces is often how we do things to cut pieces um but this is a random number of cut put it there just to show this is the the result of cutting into pieces and then the tool of cutting with knife. So the whole thing is just cut. Um, I think it's a good definition of cut. So everything in one cut, that means all included. Uh, there's no odd or different treatment or except, exceptions. Everything is treated the same in one cut. Okay. 众生, uh, I translate it as collective beings. So 众 is this concept of a crowd almost in the Western 
concept. So Western two, we have one singular, two, a pair, a couple, and then three is a crowd or multitude of things, right? Um, in Chinese, the language creators often put together, there are repetitions, sometimes two times repetition. We see a lot of like a double, two times the repetition of something. When it comes to three times, that's like an extra effort for language to depict. And if it is three, that means really something. It's not just number three, it means way beyond three almost. Um, for example, we have mu, this single tree, right? Single tree, and then we have two put together, double tree, that means sort of a, a forest. But if we put the three trees together, stacking up like a one on the top, two at the bottom, three trees stacking up, that's like a, a jungle. Uh, so that's the sense of how, how the scale of things. So if it's three times, it's not three in exact, actually. It means way more than three. Okay. But on top of it, there's an eyeball watching over this crowd. So you can view it in today's term terminology, surveillance. So these are the crowd. You see they're walking toward the same directions, one fall or another, in in orderly sequence, because they are under surveillance. They are not a mob. They're not just a collective random people uh, or people coming together with a purpose other than the purpose of what the ruler want them to do or think or behave. So these are um, population basically under the surveillance, under control, and they behave as the way the ruler want them to. So that's considered zhong. Eventually that sense of, you know, control the crowd, eyeball got, uh, we got rid of from the language, it becomes more neutral. It just depicts multitudes of people. And you see the contemporary Chinese use um, the visual placement when we have three repetition of the same character, we have one place on the top, two at the bottom. That's just visually more stable and kind of save the horizontal space, right? You don't squeeze two, three of them all at a horizontally, so it kind of stack up. That makes sense. Okay, Sheng, we, I translated lives lives um, because in this context, if we're talking about a zhong sheng, it's multiple, right? So I have to be Englishly correct as lives. Uh, but sheng in Chinese, we don't distinguish where there's no plural form, such a thing. Everything comes the same. And um, that just means uh, life or living beings. Um, okay, so we have this trident looking symbol. That's our plant or grass, something growing from the soil. And the bottom is our soil symbol. And the first horizontal line is the, the ground level. And you can see the plant's root sticking below the ground. And then there is the second horizontal line that's a slightly longer than the first one. That's important. So for Chinese, we have to make sure the bottom horizontal line is longer than the middle one. Because if it is not, it's another character. Uh, so this longer horizontal line uh, is an indicator to show that's the position or that's the, the stuff, the things that we're talking about. And that's right below the end of the root or next to surrounding the root. That, that's just, okay, what, what root is surrounded by is by soil. So that's Chinese way to indicate, okay, this whole symbol is soil. So now we have a plant sticking <laughs> um, above the soil. That means the plant is still rooted, it's still alive, it's still upright, right? It's not a dead plant, it's uh, pretty much alive. So that's our definition of living, things that got a life in them. And it's plant-based, so it actually includes both animal and plant and humans, of course. So all inclusive in this in this symbol. So that's why it's it's appropriate to use this symbol in this 
Buddhism terminology to include all kinds of beings who are existing, who may or may not feel or may or may not walk or may or may not think. Okay, so that's sheng, and I just translate it as all beings. And here is a example of how this expression is used in contemporary uh, passage. Basically, they're talking about a, uh, um, a monk. So, of course, this is Buddhist term terminology. So they're talking about a monk or trying to learn how the, the monk like appear or show, display a happy look. I guess it's interesting. Okay, a little bit of off subject. Huanxi is a Buddhism terminology. One Chinese one we see huanxi, not xi huan, xi huan means like. It's a common everyday language. We like something, we xi huan something, right? And um, if it's a huanxi, then the order is flipped, then it becomes Buddhism terminology. It means happiness. And uh, we also have a xi lu, that's a translation from um, Christianity. And it has to be xi lu, these two characters paired together. Um, that means joy or kind of like a happiness because somebody who does this translation of Christianity introduced to Chinese uh, audience, then um, they cannot repeat the Buddhism terminology. They have to create something in a similar. So they share this xi character. And then instead of huan xi, they use, they pair the xi with a lu, lu as a music turned joy symbol. So that, that's something that as a language user, when we see the pairing of characters, um, we, we sense the, the meaning and also the background, the context it came from, or the quote it came from. So here, Huan Xi is Buddhism, okay? And then uh, it says, 我们要学面对这一切众生. See here, that's 一切众生. That is um, when we're facing all beings um, defined, defined by the Buddhism, right? Like all forms of beings. Uh, uh, we want to grow a heart of happiness. Um, and that each you see, each is repeated, <clears throat> but it paired with a shi, time, like at all times, each at all places, and yu dao each zhong sheng, all beings, man mian xiao rong, show. Your face is covered by smiles. That's the attitude or the posture the Buddhism encourage people to take um, to to show joy, to beam every day toward all kinds of beings. Okay, so that's 一切众生. Passion to the same thinking by one. What a day with Sophie. See you another day.